If you want to drastically improve your UI design, try using the what happens if technique when you're designing. Hi everyone, I'm Elizabeth from Designer Up, helping you become a more skillful and mindful designer. Designing user interfaces is about determining the visual appearance of the different states of feedback from the user and the system, and the best layout of each component and how they should all flow together. So conditionals are really at the core of what we're designing. Let's do a little exercise to help us understand what conditionals are and how we can use them when designing our user interfaces and experiences to make sure we have no gaps and we've considered everything. Conditional logic helps us design interfaces and interactions based on the context, actions, and various use cases that might occur. Here we are in Figma, and I like to start out with a simple checklist of all of the elements and states that I'm gonna need. So let's take the example of a simple blog post card. There are a couple of things that I should include in this or that I may or may not want to show. First, we have an author and a date, a tag for the category, a title of the blog post, the body text, and maybe read time. I could also add something like the author's avatar or profile picture. Now you can create this in a separate note-taking app in something like Notion and stay to the end because I've created a very cool resource to help you do this. But for this example, I'm just creating a frame right inside of Figma so that I can have it side by side next to my design. The dynamic nature of a user interface means that whenever a user or a creator adds or excludes information or content, the design itself needs to adapt and change to those inclusions or exclusions. In Figma, I've created a very simple blog post card. And in it, there is the author avatar, name, the date, a featured image, the title of the post, and the body of the post. Now, there are a few other elements here that we haven't considered that might need to be included. Another reason for thinking in terms of conditionals and understanding the UX that you want to create is that it helps you determine where to place your elements, how to lay things out, and to have solid reasoning behind your design choices. So although this author didn't add a tag to their post, if we want to make sure we're designing all the states and not leaving any gaps, we have to decide where a tag could be added without interrupting the entire design or experience of the post. So I'm just going to create a little tag here and if I added it here there is not really enough space between the author and the title of the post and this is where the what happens if technique comes in what happens if we add a tag to this post this is when we need to start thinking about the conditional that what if question helps us determine how each state of this blog post card should look so for an example the state of the card that has a tag this doesn't work very well that is also too tight we could add it over here but what happens if the author's name is very long. We could add it at the bottom of the post, but oftentimes whenever there is a square looking button type tag at the bottom of a blog card, we tend to associate it with a button, maybe like a read more button. And so that's probably not the best in terms of design patterns. So another way to approach this is to just create all of the little components that would need to go into this blog post and then drag them around and place them until you can clearly add and remove them and have empty states without it affecting the overall look and feel of the post. So let's go ahead and add in the other elements that are listed here in my checklist. So we're going to add in read time. And then there's another important what happens if question to ask, and that is what if the title is longer than one line? Let's say that it wraps to two lines like this. Now we have to decide whether or not we should truncate the title like so or if we should push the blog post down. So you might say, why don't we just make it longer? And we certainly could do that, 
just by dragging these elements. But then let's say, for example, this will exist inside of a grid of other blog posts, which is quite common for blog post cards. If one of the posts has a longer title that pushes the entire card length down, then when these cards stack next to each other, they won't be the same height. So then we're getting into a masonry style design, but what you might want is just an even grid. So we have to figure out how to accommodate different lengths of texts without changing the height of the card. So let's go back to our first example and see how we can move these elements around in order to accommodate all of the possible permutations and conditions that this postcard might exist in. So first, I think I would prefer to have the blog title wrap for two lines before it truncates. So that means if it goes to three lines, there will be a dot, dot, dot at the end. But if it's anywhere on one or two lines, it will show the entire title. So let's keep this control example on this side so that we can make sure that we're keeping things consistent no matter what's inside of the card. So I'm going to move a few things around starting with the tag. And I think what I'd like to do is keep the tag up here at the top. And then I think I might move the author down and the date as well. So I'll put that at the bottom. So for this tag, I think I'd like it to be in line in the same container with that. I also have to keep in mind what if there are multiple tags. So let's say that we have another tag here. We're not going to have so many tags that it gets all the way to the other end, but we do have to take into consideration that some tags might be very long, such as. So with that, you can see that you would have to limit the space here on these posts to maybe just five or six tags. Otherwise, you'd want to make sure that they wrapped to the next line. And that could be fine too. If you need more, you can kind of just drop them down like this and do another row. What's great about this particular version and layout is that even if I don't have a lot of tags, it still looks good. And if I don't have any tags at all, it doesn't look bad either. Going back to the length of this blog card, if I want to have this the exact same height as cards that only have one line in the title, I'm going to need to make room for the author. In this case, the best thing I think would be to truncate the actual blog body excerpt. So I might just do this and have the dot, 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 and then move my author element up. So we still need a bit more white space here. So I'm going to go ahead and truncate this one more line. And there, that looks pretty good. So now the rule is if this blog post has a tag, it goes here. If it doesn't, it looks like this. There's still a five minute read here. And we're having something that can adapt to all of the different elements that may or may not be included. Now, since five minute read is going to be a constant, I might want to put that over here on the left side and then move my tag over to the right. That's also really nice because it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of extra white space and it looks a little bit more balanced in terms of visual weight that way. So there we have our post. Now there are a few other considerations of optional elements that we need to make sure still look really good in this post, whether or not they exist. I'm going to move my checklist over a bit and then I'm going to duplicate this. Now let's imagine for a second that the author does not upload an avatar. What will the post look like without it? Do you want a placeholder avatar? I might pop up to my unsplash plugin and then I might just put in, let's say, just some solid green looking image that I can always use as a default when someone doesn't upload. So that looks really cool. Another option would just be to hide it and make sure that the author is left aligned when there isn't one added. So the other consideration is what if they don't upload a featured image? You could again have a default image or you could simply move everything up and extend the excerpt from the post. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to move that up to the top and we're going to move the author down and we're going to go ahead and stretch our text out. There we go. Now it doesn't matter if your user comes in and doesn't add an avatar, if they don't add a tag, if they have one line 
or two and if they have a featured image or they don't. Now we can say that we've checked off all of these items and we have a default empty state or alternative state for if one of them is not added. So this is just one example of using that what happens if technique. It's just a way for you to think about solving problems and making sure that you're not missing gaps in any of the work that you're doing. This is something that developers will absolutely love you for because things like these are always among the questions that developers have. So in summary, thinking in terms of conditionals can help us to ensure our designs adjust to user input, prevents gaps in our flows and use cases, adheres to best practices and design patterns, it helps our developers know how things should look and behave, and it helps us account for all of the components that might appear or not appear, and consider all of the interactions that might take place. I also have a set of free checklists for Notion in the description for UI design and UX design that you can download and use whenever you're designing or starting a new project. I've also done another video with a collection of real UI and UX design pattern resources that you can pull from for inspiration. And if you're interested in learning all of this in a structured program with an amazing curriculum, getting a certificate and building an amazing MVP and portfolio along with the community of designers and also joining our job matching program, you have got to come check out our product design course at designerup.co. Thank you all again for watching and I'll see you next time.